Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today is the day, bookshelf tour day. Today we're gonna go through every book on my shelves, how I organize them, and some thoughts here and there about the books. Okay, so these aren't technically all of the books I own. I do still have some books at my parents' house, but these are most of them besides the books on my TBR shelf, which I'll show you guys briefly as well. But all of these books I have read, which depending on the book, could have been a good thing or a I wish I never glanced in this book's direction kind of thing. Do we start with the books on the shelves or the shelves? I'm thinking the shelves. Here is my main bookshelf, my prized gem. 90% of booktube shelves their books in the Ikea bookcase or a white cube bookcase, but I'm not like the other girls. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just too cringy, even for me. No, but I wanted to go for something different, something that really spoke to me and would be something I would want to use for years to come. So I did spend a lot of time researching until I laid eyes on this beauty and I knew we were destined for each other. Come on, this bookshelf perfectly encapsulates my aesthetic. If I were a bookshelf, this would be me. Love the wood tones, love the woven siding. It's beautiful, stunning, amazing, breathtaking. Insert any other magnificent descriptions. I will link this down below in case you guys want to look at it. I will say that this was a little bit expensive. So I am dreading the day when this bookshelf undoubtedly will get overrun with books. And then I'm gonna have to figure out where else to put my books because I don't know if I'll be able to buy another one of these. Again, this was like an investment piece for me and something that I will have for decades. Enough about the bookshelf, let's get on to the books on it. My top shelf here houses my very small collection of nonfiction books. The size of the section compared to all the books in my other sections is comical. And then we have literary fiction on the right. Let's start on the left though. I'm a very, I guess you could call picky nonfiction reader. I want to be fairly certain that I will like a nonfiction book before reading it. First off, I have Crying in H Mart. Oh my god, Buddha. I'm not gonna take all of them out like this, but this book has one of my favorite covers. Oh, and I guess I got it for 50% off. That is probably why I picked it up in the first place. Great memoir though. Are you okay? Next, I have Brain on Fire, which I read my junior year of high school. I actually annotated it. Not me saying I'm not gonna take the books out when I'm literally doing that. But if you can see that, wow, you know me scholar. Don't look too close at what I wrote there because it's probably gibberish. I like sped read this. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed it though. You're all probably alarmed why I have this book on tyranny. Typically, I wouldn't own a book like this, but I had to read it for my women's and revolutions class. Now, I may or may not have actually read the whole thing, but for my professor's sake, uh, let's just say I did. And then the graphic novel Persepolis is actually the other book I'd read for that class, which it was actually really cool getting assigned a graphic novel for a class. Classes should do that more often. Hey, one could argue that graphic novels are actually more effective than reading the same story from a book. Because with graphic novels, you're absorbing the information through two channels, through pictures and through reading. Next to my nonfiction, I have a Buddha. Some of you may remember, I used to have a plant here. It pains me to inform you that I may have killed my plant. Yes, I am a plant murderer. I cannot be trusted with keeping plants alive. I don't know how to take care of them. They'll die either from getting overwatered or underwatered. So the long story short, I now have a Buddha because I like the color and my mom gave it to me. She got this when she was in South Korea for work like 10 years ago. <laughs> Anyways, he's just chilling there, protecting my books, separating the nonfiction from the fiction. To start off my fiction, I have A Little Life, which I recently read and made a whole reading vlog on. Then I have The Midnight Library. Some of these books on the fiction shelf could possibly be considered another genre, such as fantasy or romance, but the books in this section I would shelve primarily as general literary fiction. Then I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This is a gorgeous edition. I gotta pull this one out too. This one has like a bookmark. I love it when books have this like ribbon. So stunning. This book worked for me. I understand why it doesn't for everyone, but my advice would be just to be patient with it because it really is a beautifully told story. I also did a reading vlog for this book. Yes, I will plug every book I have done a reading vlog for. I have The Gunkle, Ghosts, love this book as well. It kind of gives me like sad girl book vibes, if you know what I mean. The Perfect Couple, which again, you could 
probably consider either a romance or a mystery. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which I read my senior year of high school, along with 1984. I feel like everyone should read this book once in their life. It was so fascinating reading a book about a future society that explores themes that you can still apply to like our society today. And this was written, I forget when, <laughs> uh, scholar. But this was written before 1984 and the year 1984 was supposed to be like this future society. And now it's 2020. And um, it is 2022, Sarah. My bad. <laughs> and so many things in this book could still be applied today. So many inspirations have come from this book as well, including that iconic Mac commercial. Okay, I'm geeking out. I will stop rambling. <laughs> I have The Outsiders, The Great Gatsby, which I read my freshman year of high school. I don't know why I'm clarifying the books I was assigned to read, but I feel like some of you might find that interesting. On my second shelf, I have my romances and rom-com books. Since this shelf is fairly large, I have it either organized by author or series, unless it's like a standalone. Starting on the left, I have my YA books. So I have the To All the Boys I Loved Before series. If you have watched those movies and like them, go read the books because they were even better than the movies. Better than the movies. Ha. Definitely intended that pun. Next to them, I have The Summer of Broken Rules. I don't read a lot of YA romance, so then we jump directly to my standalone romances. I have the cheat sheet with the special edition cover, which I feel like everyone owns, so is it really special edition? Um, I don't think so. On a Night Like This, You Deserve Each Other, The Hating Game, The Love Hypothesis, one of my favorite romances, Part of Your World, Every Summer After, which some also classify this as general fiction. So I may be bumping this book up to my top shelf when I inevitably need to shelve more books on here. The Spanish Love Deception, which I also did a reading vlog on and possibly ended up not really enjoying that much. I'm saying possibly because I don't want to spoil the vlog. You'll have to go and watch it and find out, I guess. Then we move on to my romance book organized by author. So I have Beach Read and Book Lovers by Emily Henry, Weather Girl and The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This one was one of my favorite reads from 2021. The Soulmate Equation and The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I desperately need to read more from them soon. My Killer Vacation, Fixer Up, It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I feel like Fixer Up is underrated. This was such a cute book. I need to eventually get and read the other books in the series. The Hot and Hammered series. <laughs> that name makes me cringe. <laughs> I have Twisted Love, Twisted Games, and Twisted Hate from the Twisted series. I will not be surprised if my Barnes & Noble won't stock Twisted Lies for like another six months because that is exactly what happened with Twisted Hate. And then finally, I have the first two books of the Addicted series, Addicted to You and Ricochet. I also need to read more from the series soon. I'm trying to read one per month, but that's not going so well because I get distracted with other books. Love the series though, it is addicting. My third shelf houses some may consider pretty chaotically but it makes sense to me my mystery and thriller books i start off on the left here just like how on the shelf above my ya books i have the first two books in the inheritance game series the inheritance games and then the hawthorne legacy the good girl's guide to murder trilogy so a good girl's guide to murder good girl bad blood and as good as dead oh wait i meant to put these books over here whoops that didn't happen let's just pretend i did that before this video so moving on uh there was and a tiny blip there. We have my standalone YA thrillers. So Ace of Spades and 14 Ways to Die. Then I have You by Caroline Kepnes. One of my all-time favorite series, the Finley Donovan series. This book actually might want to be placed before the second book. If you guys expected some organized shelves, you would be wrong. I have Finley Donovan is Killing It and Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. These books are such wholeheartedly fun times. Then I have my JP Delaney books, Playing Nice, The Girl Before, and The Perfect Wife. We then move into standalone Miss and thrillers. So I have a classic and then there were none. The Party, which is a book I actually read recently. So there's a little sneak peek for my September wrap up for you. I have The Long Walk, my one and only Stephen King novel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first novel Stephen King either wrote or published, something like that. Reading this book felt like a long walk and not in a good way. I have The Last Mrs. Parrish, The Silent Patient, The Best of Friends, Blood Sugar, and then these thrillers are books I've picked for my book of the month. So I have The Night She Disappeared, The Golden Couple, Lock Every Door, and then The Last Flight. The bottom shelf holds Overflow, Mystery and Thriller books from the shelf above, and then my very small fantasy section. I am not a fantasy newbie per se. I have read more fantasy than just these books, but those books are at my parents' house. I have A Flicker in the Dark, The Appeal, more like I wish I made an appeal to 
myself when deciding to read that book in the first place. Did that make sense? Don't know. Reckless Girls, Good Rich People, and The Thursday Murder Club. This little basket in the middle here just holds some annotating supplies. Like I have some highlighters. And then these super cute sticky notes. I found these at Target on like their book section in cap. Moving on to my fantasy. I forgot the name of the series, but this is another great series. But I have The Daughter of the Pirate King and then The Daughter of the Siren Queen. The Goose Girl, which my brother's girlfriend gave to me. So thank you, Camille. Cinderella is Dead. My fucking gosh, that book is fantastic. I don't know why I don't talk about that book more. And then last and certainly least, I have The Cruel Prince. Yeah, it wasn't for me. Here are my floating shelves. Gosh, I have to stand on my couch. Pray for me that I don't break my neck. Are we gonna do it like this? I guess so. Starting with the Truly Devious series, I have Truly Devious, The Vanishing Stair, The Hand on the Wall, and The Box in the Woods. I didn't get that. Excuse me, I wasn't talking to you, Siri. I'm not sure I understand. Exactly. Of course, I have to have a Taylor Jenkins Reid shelf. So I have Daisy Jones and the Six, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and then Malibu Rising. All right, this is probably the most basic shelf I own, but she's still stunning. We love Coho over here on my channel. I have it ends with us, reminders of him, ugly love, hopeless, November 9th, Layla, and then my all-time favorite, Verity. And then finally, my Sherry Lapina shelf. I have an unwanted guest, the end of her, someone we know, and not a happy family. Here's my TBR shelf, or shelves, which I told you guys I'd show you. Okay, this bookcase is actually a Billy bookcase from Ikea. Not me hating on them earlier. I wasn't hating on them. I have a Billy bookcase at my house, and then a smaller one here. But whenever I get a new book, it goes here until I read it, and then I I shelve it in my main bookcase. These books aren't really organized in any way particularly, which I actually like. This could be like a whole separate video, but here's just a little overview. There you have it. That is my little library I'm growing. What am I, a plant? <laughs> Of course, my bookshelf is going to change over time as I add more books to it. So eventually I will probably have to do another updated bookshelf tour. I've mentioned this before, but the dream is to have my own library room with floor to ceiling bookcases, comfy chair, coffee bar, sliding ladder, all of that. That will not be for a while, like a while while. 20 years at least. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on my bookshelves down in the comments below. I like them. I would hope so. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me and my channel out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.